From Miami Beach, the sun and fun capital of the world, it's the Jackie Gleason Show and his American Scene magazine. This portion brought to you by... New Endus makes the dust magnet of your ma for cloth. Endus, another work-saving product from Drackett. Starring Jackie Gleason, Frank Fontaine, Barbara Heller, Phil Bruns, the June Taylor Dancers, Sammy Spear and his orchestra, with Jackie's guest, Phyllis Diller. And away we go! <laughs> Sammy Spear, take a bow, Sam. <laughs> oh, what class, what class. That jacket looks like the battleground for the war on poverty. <laughs> That's made of very unusual material. It's hand-woven from strands from Dr. Zorba's hair. <laughs> Beautiful little Could you bring out the things, please? This is what makes life worth living. Uh, thank you. Thank you, girl. Let me go. There they go. Three peas in a pod. Here I am, the jolly green giant. <laughs> Bill Bailey had a seen them. He'd never left home, you know. I feel great. You know, at, at Miami uh, Beach is the convention capital of the world. All the conventions come down here. And we live, uh, that's uh, our auditorium, incidentally, is right next to the convention hall. 
So we see all the conventions that go on. And the last few weeks, I've been coming to rehearsals, and I see the same guy. He had a little tag on his jacket and with Charlie on it, you know. <laughs> now, they don't do that, so people meeting them will know who they are. That's so later on, they can look at it and find out who they are themselves. Because <laughs> they go pretty good down here. Not everybody, but some of them. Well, I see this guy. He, they had the Brotherhood of the Railroad down here. They had the dining car union, they had the restaurant unions, and this guy is going in and out all of the conventions. So I grabbed a hold of him, I said, buddy, I said, do you belong to all these unions? He says, no, I live down here in Atlantic City. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a throat crusher. I was in a restaurant the other day, and there's a guy sitting over at a table, they brought him over a cake, it had, looked like a million candles on it. And there were a few people sitting around with him, and they seemed to be celebrating something, so I called the waiter over, I said, what's going on over there? He said, that man is celebrating his 103rd birthday. I said, 103 years old? He said, yeah. So I thought I'd go over and congratulate him. I said, buddy, I said, I don't know you. I said, my name's Gleason. And I hear that you're 103 years old. I'd like to congratulate you. He says, thank you very much. <laughs> I said, uh, would you mind telling me something? What's the secret of your longevity? He says, I'll be very happy to tell you. He says, I have never had a drink in my life. <laughs> he says, I eat nothing but raw carrots, celery, and fruit juices. I have never been out with a girl in my life. She says, I go to bed at 9 o'clock, and I'm up at 6 in the morning. And I said, that's why you're 103 years old? He says, no, that's how I'm 103 years old. I still don't know why. <laughs> you know, there are certain ways you can tell you're getting old. Some nights I feel old, like tonight, for instance. years off. I, uh, there's perfect ways you can tell. Like, for instance, if you come down to Miami Beach, check into your room, and then come right down to the lobby and go to the desk clerk and say, do you know a good foot doctor? You know you're getting old. <laughs> or, for instance, if you raid the icebox, you get up in the middle of the night to raid the icebox, and you have to stop off in the bathroom to get your teeth. <laughs> When you're out with a big crowd, I'll tell you how you really know you're old. You're out with a big crowd, and you're all getting into one automobile. And a guy turns around to you and he says, look, we're gonna be a little crowded here. Do you mind if my wife sits on your lap? <laughs> then you know you've had it, you know. Oh. Or when you tune in the Miss America television program just to hear Burt Park sing. <laughs> Or when you have to sit down to do a monologue. <laughs> you know, it's, it's their time, you know. But tonight, tonight, we have something special. Would you uh, please bring it out? Thank you, dear. I tell you, boy. She taught the trump trumpet section how to pucker up, you know. <laughs> now, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat in store for you. I'm going to play the trumpet. And please, please. And I have asked for the assistance of Mr. Sammy Spear. Would you come up, Sam, please? Now, you understand, Sam, that all I want you to do is just play a little harmony and, you know, a few obligatos. I'll take care of the melody. Of course, Jack. Do we have a little introduction? Yes, a little introduction, if you don't mind.
lip. Very nice, Sam. I'll handle everything. <laughs> address. <laughs> All you seem to do is dust, dust, dust. That's because dust claws and mops scatter as much as they pick up. Dust rises and settles again. New End Dust takes dust out of circulation. Just spray a little on, and it makes a dust magnet out of your dust mop or cloth. End Dust picks up the pollen and germ-laden dust even a vacuum misses. Holds it tight until you're ready to shake it loose. Unlike wax polishes, you can use end dust everywhere dust collects. For dusting Venetian blinds, floors, furniture, and picture frames. And you dust less often. New end dust makes a dust magnet out of your dust mop or cloth. It's just for dusting, and it's just wonderful. Christine Clam. The American Scene magazine now brings its weekly newsreel highlights of happenings around the nation and the world. <laughs> Item for auto enthusiasts. The average citizen is able to drive a car but knows little about the machine he's driving. We now show you a motorist who is forced to make some adjustments on his car without the aid of a mechanic. <laughs>
of bravery in action. Quite often during World War II, machine gun nests were set up in old barns and farmhouses. There was usually one soldier who would volunteer to attack the farmhouse single-handed. Why does such a man perform such a heroic act? The American Scene magazine now shows you a film clip taken somewhere in France. the American Zine magazine brings you its feature story on Reginald Van Gleeson the third we turn to our advertising page <laughs> Love and Purina Dog Chow. Outdoor fun sure brings on big appetites. Here's one dog food that satisfies a dog's hunger. Purina Dog Chow. Purina has an exclusive meaty flavor that they really enjoy. Makes eager eaters out of picky eaters. Purina helps keep them healthy too with an exclusive blend of 43 vital nutrients. So totally good for your dog. Purina Dog Chow, the modern, complete dog food. All you add is love. Here is my special report. Recently, Reginald Van Gleeson III has been very successful touring the country with a series of recitations. The American Scene magazine now takes you to Rain Barrel, Nevada, where Reginald Van Gleeson III is about to give his interpretation of one of the most popular hits of the day, Ringo.
He lay face down on the desert sand, clutching a six gun in his hand. Shot from behind, I thought he was dead, for under his heart was an ounce of lead. But a spark still burned, so I used my knife. <laughs> and late that night, I saved the life of Ringo. <laughs> I nursed him till the danger passed. The days went by, he mended fast. Then from dawn till setting sun, he practiced with that deadly gun. And hour on hour, I watched in awe. No human being could match the draw of Ringo. <laughs> One day we ran. the mountain crest and I went east and he went west I took to lore and more a star while he spread terror near and far with leaden blood he gained such fame all through the west they feared the name of Ringo <laughs> I knew someday I'd face the test, which one of us would be the best. And sure enough, the word came down that he was holed up in the town. I left the posse in the street, and I went in alone to meet. <laughs> They said my speed was fast, next to none. But my lightning draw had just begun when I heard a blast that stung my wrist. <laughs> the gun went flying from my fist. And I was looking down the bore of the deadly 44 over Nigo. They say that was the only time that anyone had seen him smile. He slowly lowered his gun and then he said to me, we're even friend. And so at last I understood that there was still a spark of good in Ringo. <laughs> I blocked the path of his retreat. He turned and stepped into the street. A dozen guns spit fire in lead. And a moment later, he lay dead. The town began to shout and cheer. Nowhere was there shed a tear for Ringo. The story spread throughout the land that I had beaten Ringo's hand. <laughs> and it was just the years, they say, that made me put my guns away. But on his grave, they can't explain the tarnished star above the name of Ringo. Got a penny? Pick one with lots of tarnish on it. 
Now, let's melt that tarnish away. Without scrubbing, over 20 years of tarnish melt away with Twinkle Copper Cleaner. Twinkle works chemically to melt discoloration and tarnish without scrubbing. Every trace is gone with Twinkle Copper Cleaner. Companion product to Twinkle Cream for Silver. The house is quiet. The baby is asleep, but in the kitchen. Inside the drain, Germ City is being built. Household germs are breeding. That's why you need Drano regularly. Drano bubbles up and sweeps away every particle, kills on contact 100% of household germs, but nothing, not even Drano, can keep germs away forever. So remember, once in every week, Drano in every drain. Jackie Gleason's American Scene magazine was brought to you by... Twinkle Copper Cleaner, the paste formula that melts tarnish off copper without scrubbing. And Drano, another work-saving product from Dracut. Stay tuned now for more of Jackie Gleason. His guest, Phyllis Diller. Joe the bartender with Frank Fontaine as Crazy Guggenheim. portion of Jackie Gleason's American Scene magazine is brought to you by... New Philip Morris Filter, the cigarette with coconut charcoal in the tip. And by Bristol Myers, the makers of Buffrin, the modern drug for pain relief. This is San Francisco, where medical societies representing the nation's doctors recently reviewed latest medical findings. Arlene Francis reporting, the topic of one important paper, arthritis. This study showed how a drug long used to relieve minor arthritis pain does under medical supervision also reduce swelling and inflammation. That drug, bufferin. In one test, swelling in a patient's finger prevented a ring from slipping on. After treatment with bufferin, the ring slipped on easily. Now, if you have arthritis above all, see your doctor. And if he recommends bufferin as part of his total treatment, it is good to know you can take it four, five, six times a day because bufferin prevents stomach irritation plain aspirin often causes. Bufferin has many uses. I use it. I recommend it. Bufferin, the modern drug for pain. For years, women have been laughing at men. Well, here's a woman that men have been laughing at for years. The inimitable Phyllis Diller! Aha! Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And I want you to realize that I'm happy to be here, although I don't enjoy looking like this. I went to the beauty parlor again today. They're nothing but failures. <laughs> he doesn't set my hair, he tosses it. <laughs> and you know, they have a special entrance for me marked emergency. <laughs> I always back in so they think I'm leaving. <laughs> and what burns me up, he's prettier than I am. <laughs> See, but today I said, listen, I discovered a cream on my own that's done me more good than anything you ever sold me for my face. It's called saddle soap. <laughs> the 
now my skin is in such bad shape they named a television show after it. It's called Rawhide. <laughs> oh, thank goodness beauty is only skin deep or I'd be rotten to the core. <laughs> but I adore my work. I just love it, except, of course, the lights scare me. Oh. See, when I was a housewife, if I ever had that much light on me, when I woke up, I had another kid. <laughs> scares me and I'm fearless. Because for one thing, we have far too many kids. At one time in our playpen, there was standing room only. It looked like a bus stop for midgets. <laughs> the only way I could get away from them was get in with them. <laughs> and then they'd lose me. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? And they'd find me. Who's the big ugly one? <laughs> they finally figured out it was me because I was the only one in there who was dry. and used to get so damp, we'd get a rainbow above it. <laughs> and I had no background for marriage, and when you're first married, you have nothing. You have kids. You don't need kids. You know what we had when we first got married? You may cry a little. We had a period Davenport. Well, actually, we had a Davenport period. <laughs> that was it. We sat on it, cooked on it, ate on it. We even drove the darn thing to town. That's a long trip on those little teeny wheels. Of course, we were the only people in that town who drove a Duncan fight. And as I say, I had no background for marriage, whatever. I didn't know how to clean a house. One day I knew how to clean. We had been married seven years. So I borrowed a rake. And I got all the dirt up in one big pile, and then I didn't know what to do with it. So I washed it and put it back. <laughs> and I haven't improved. At this point now, I am 18 years behind with my ironing. <laughs> I'm never going to iron it. It wouldn't fit anybody I know. <laughs> All our kids are grown. I got baby clothes in the ironing. <laughs> the only time I ever enjoyed ironing was the day I accidentally got gin in the steam iron. <laughs> Golly, those collars got stiff. <laughs> and it stunk up the whole neighborhood within 10 minutes. Four of my best friends were there in cocktail gowns. <laughs> so they helped me refrigerate the ironing, and we drank the iron. <laughs> you haven't lived till you've had hot gin out of a steam iron. <laughs> when Fang, that's my husband, <laughs> everybody says, why do you call him Fang? He's got this one tooth that's two inches long. I met him at a cocktail party. I kept trying to light it. <laughs> About all he's good for is opening beer cans. <laughs> oh, and goodness knows he drinks. <clears throat> he could chin yourself in his breath. But he's gotten so conceited, you see, he thinks of himself as Cary Grant because his tooth wore a hole in his chin. <laughs> you know, he just lays around. He never does anything. I, I tried pep pills. I gave him three pep pills. First time I ever saw him run to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but the day of the ironing, with the thing in the iron, he came home, and I was lying on the mantle. He thought we had a new piece of driftwood. <laughs> but anyway, I had no background for motherhood either. I'd never seen a live baby, and when they brought this thing in, I didn't know what it was. I didn't like its looks. <laughs> they're trying to say it's a new baby. It looked used. <laughs> You know, they're pushing pretty hard. They say, well, it's a cute little monkey. I said, it may be a cute little monkey. It's a very ugly baby. <laughs> so they insisted I had to take it. They said it went with the room. <laughs> so they told me how to oil a darn thing. <laughs> you gotta oil it every day.
Hey, now, a car, you oil it once a month, and it runs great, and we wanted a car. <laughs> so now we got all of these dumb kids. I named them all kid. Well, I had to keep it simple for Fang. <laughs> but they have different first names, like, hey, kid, you kid, dumb kid. <laughs> and then there's son of Fang. <laughs> but if I just had one smart kid, but they're all... One is 24. Are you ready for that? I think it's a terrible thing to have a baby when you're 12. <laughs> and he is so dumb. When he was eight, we gave him a banjo. He thought it was a tennis racket. <laughs> and what do you tell a kid who's clear up to the semifinals? <laughs> and then the twins are 18 and 20. <laughs> I'll never forget that birth. <laughs> and then we have this one beautiful daughter of 10, a widow. <laughs> and she is going through a stage I may not live through. Whenever I go home and I try not to go there, they bore me. <laughs> Well, they're always making demands. They want lunch, dinner, all that mess. <laughs> Listen, I'm busy. So when I go home, she plays secretary. And the last time I was home, she answers the door and the phone botches it. I wouldn't... I'm in the kitchen trying to get the rest of the ketchup out of the bottle, all right? The kid goes to the door. It's the president of the PTA. <laughs> now, you know, this has got to be about the squarest broad in town. <laughs> And I am not in too good with the PTA. <laughs> Ever since I baked him a paperweight. <laughs> in fact, just the other day, Fang came into the kitchen, and he doesn't come in there too often because he's afraid of rats. <laughs> but he came in at noon because he knows they eat out. a person in our family that has the guts to eat raisin toast. <laughs> so Fang comes in there, he wants to know why I only bake one cupcake at a time. That's all the room there is in the oven. There's crud all over the side. <laughs> So my dumb kid is at the front door talking to Miss PTA, and Miss PTA says to the kid, and what is mommy doing? And the kid says, she's in the kitchen, hitting the bottle. <laughs> and that's another thing, if I had known that when they're little, they get up at 5 a.m., I would have had no kids. <laughs> Listen, if I wanted anything around the house that got up at 5 a.m., I'd have raised chickens. <laughs> At least they get up and lay the egg and go back to bed. <laughs> so one morning, this kid comes up to my bedroom, 5 a.m. You kidding? I hadn't even passed out yet. <laughs> <laughs> and she wants me to go down into the ice cold kitchen and get her breakfast. Listen, at 5 a.m., I'm afraid of rats. <laughs> In fact, at 5 a.m., I'm afraid of raisin toast. <laughs> and listen, it's not all my fault that the kitchen is such a mess. It's old, it's like more like a cave. Oh, I got, I got frost on the outside of my refrigerator. <laughs> Last time I defrosted, the Missouri River went up two feet. <laughs> I got a mixture that's run by a water wheel. So I told the kid, who in the world do you think you are? Turns out she knew. She said, you're old enough to get your own breakfast. Huge kid, two months old, huge. <laughs> so she went down to the kitchen, came right back up. She says, I got the bread in the toaster, but I can't make it flush. <laughs> My 
my barber is always right. So one day I said, Ralph, I'm going to try a filter cigarette. What's the best? Try Philip Morris filter. Ralph, you're wrong. Philip Morris doesn't make a filter. I'm right. Philip Morris makes the filter that's full of flavor. Coconut shell charcoal is why. The coconut shell charcoal in the Philip Morris tip that's full tobacco flavor through. That's why it's full of flavor. Ralph's right. This one is full of flavor. See? I'm always right. Try new Philip Morris filter. You'll like them. Injector shavers. Don't you wish you could fit your razor with a Persona stainless? The blade that's given many men more shaves than <laughs> cord <laughs> blades? Now you can. With Persona stainless injector. Made by Persona's exclusive British process to give you more luxury shaves or we'll buy you <laughs> or any injector blade you name. as a day in June. I'll tell you, a day or a night when things aren't popping in the establishment of Joe the bartender. I should call. Hey, I read this Miss uh, Bearfax column. Get a load of this. Here, Miss Bearfax, the TV commentators are always talking about elder statesmen. Exactly what is an elder statesman? Signed, schoolboy. And she says, dear schoolboy, an elder statesman is any politician who lost the last election. <laughs> and she's right. Huh? Oh, he's in the back. I'll call him out. Hey, Christ! Oh, oh, Mr. Johnny. <laughs> if I got a riddle for you, Joe, do you know how, do you know how long cows should be milked? <laughs> well, I don't know how long cows should be milked. Same as the short one. <laughs> What's got ten legs runs along the floor and makes baskets? <laughs> A basketball team. <laughs> Joe, did I see a picture last night on television? It lasted four hours. It was in color. Well, it wasn't really in color. My eyes were bloodshot. <laughs> what a terrific picture, Joe. It was, the name of the picture was Tom Sawyer. It was called Tom Sawyer on account of the kid's name was Tom Sawyer. And that's why they named the picture. All right! <laughs> what a terrific picture, Joe. Tom Sawyer lived in the Middle West with his Aunt Polly along that river, the Mississippi. <laughs> right next door to his girlfriend, Becky Thatcher. And Becky was always trying to make love to Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> She's always trying to get Tom to kiss her. <laughs> she said, Tom, I just bought some lipstick. Would you like to taste it? He said, sure. <laughs> he ate two tooth. <laughs> Why did she get mad? She said, I'm true with you. I'm going with that new boy, that new clever boy, Mike Douglas, who moved in our neighborhood. Tom says, oh yeah, what's so clever about him? Can he, 
Can he wiggle his Adam's apple like me? She said, no. Can he twist his nose into a knot like me? She said, no. Can he cover his face with his ears? She said, no. She said, well, I don't think he's so clever. He can't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe, he, he, he gets so disgusted with her, he goes off fishing, and he gets back home about six o'clock at night, and his Aunt Polly says, well, Tom, I see you've been fishing. He says, yeah, along the Mississippi River. <laughs> he says, I see you caught a fish. He says, yeah. She says, oh, that's a miracle. To know it's a macro. <laughs> you have to go fishing this Tom Sawyer along that river, Joe. What a terrific river that Mississippi River is. All kinds of things on it and shipping and everything. I got the almanac, Joe. It tells all about the terrific things along the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is 1,628 miles long, three miles wide, 55 feet deep, and last year it carried 160 million tons of shipping over its mighty waters. Lumber, wood, food, tobacco, chemical, petroleum, iron, steel, the great old... <laughs> Then his friend, Huckleberry Finn, his sidekick, shows up. He says, hiya, Tom. And Tom says, I'm mad at you. He says, what are you mad at me for? I'm your sidekick. He says, that's what I'm mad at. You're always kicking me in the side. <laughs> Stop, cut it out, will you, Tom? I got plenty of worries. I'm worried about my father. He's sick. Tom says, what's the matter with your father? Huck says, I don't know. He sits around the house all day eating grapes. He's always eating grapes. And Tom says, well, what's wrong with eating grapes? He says, off the wallpaper. <laughs> Tom says, Tom says, you better watch out. Don't blah, blah, put your old man in a booby hat. And Huck says he was in the booby hatch and they threw him out. Spent three weeks there and didn't hatch a booby. <laughs> Huck says, come on, what do you say? Let's go, let's go for a ride down the Mississippi River. We'll build a raft so they go and they get a whole bunch of wood, Joe, and they get all this wood together. What a raft of wood they had. And Huck says, come on, Tom, let's build a raft. So they got the raft and they start to sail down the Mississippi River. And all of a sudden, they see an island. And, and Huck says, let's explore the island. So they go walking around the island. All of a sudden, they see a skunk. And, and they fill up their BB gun full of BBs and they aim at the skunk, but they miss because the skunk fired first. <laughs> And the first thing you know, they get lost. And Tom says, I don't know where we are. And Huck says, it's very simple to know where we are. First of all, you gotta figure out where we've been, then you know where we are. Now, first of all, let's see, where were we? That's right, we went down the hill and across the creek, right? Tom says, yeah. So then we went around the bend and beside the creek, right? Yeah. Then we went around the road and across the creek. Tom says, yeah, so where are we now? Huck says, we're up the creek. <laughs> it starts to get dark and Tom says, oh, I'm a scared, I'm a scared, I'm a scared. He says, don't be a scared for crying out loud. Get undressed. Get, 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 get down in the leash here, we'll go to sleep. 
So they start to go to sleep. And Tom says, I'm frightened, I'm frightened, I'm frightened. He says, oh, for crying out loud, don't you be a, a coward or a scaredy cat. What are you, yellow belly? Tom says, I'm in one of those things. <laughs> He says, all right, we'll go back to the raft where it's safe. And they're going along the raft, and Tom is steering down the Mississippi Pea River. <laughs> all of a sudden, Huck says, look out, Tom. There's a big rock sticking up. Look out. We're liable to have a collision. Tom says, boy, we had a collision. Hoo -hoo, the lady next door living from us. <laughs> What a collision she had in the hospital. <laughs> Huck says, wait a minute. A collision is when two things come together. And Tom says, yeah, she had twins. <laughs> he says, you said right. And Tom says, yeah, and I played her a trick on her. The boy baby had a blue ribbon and the girl baby had a little pink ribbon. And when she wasn't looking, I switched them. And now she'll never know. How about you sing a little song for Donahue and me? Okay, sure. <laughs> hey, Donahue, put it down in the What a way to start a day, stalled out cold in traffic. Why? Why did it have to happen? It happened because the gasoline did not protect against icing stones. Here, inside your carburetor, is the throttle plate, where ice can form and stick to shut off fuel mixture. You have no power, so you stall, and you sit. Or you can protect against carburetor icing stalls with mobile premium high energy gasoline, reinforced with an anti-icing ingredient. With mobile premium in your tank, see what happens inside your carburetor. In icing weather, mobile's anti-icing ingredient helps keep ice from sticking, keeps fuel mixture flowing to keep you going. Make sure you don't get stalled out cold in traffic. Fill up with mobile premium high energy gasoline with anti-icing ingredient, mobile.
You know, uh, usually at the end of the show, if we have enough time, we give credit to the performers who have helped us do a whole show. But uh, tonight, I think we'll devote it to one guy who comes on every week and is consistently good all the time. He's a wonderful guy. He's got 11 kids. And uh, anyone who has 11 kids can't be all bad, you know. <laughs> Here he is, Frank Fontaine. Take him out, Frank. of Jackie Gleason's American Scene magazine was brought to you by Mobile and more than 30,000 mobile dealers from coast to coast. And by new Philip Morris filter, the cigarette with coconut shell charcoal in the tip. This is Johnny Olson speaking for the Jackie Gleason Show. Flashes from Nat Kaplan, jewelry by Vogue Company. The program was pre-recorded.